In 3D printing, what exactly are people talking about when they say cold plate? This cold plate is the Jupine Gecko, and to put it simply, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a plate that's designed to be used in your 3D printer without heat. There are a few different reasons why you would want to do this. When you're heating a build plate, there are variable changes taking place that aren't really helpful to the 3D printing process. To the human eye, the build plate looks fairly stable, but in reality, it couldn't be further from the truth. What's actually happening is as you're heating your build plate, your build plate is warping up and down. It almost acts like a really slow moving bass guitar string. It's far from stable. And it's these micro movements and flexes that create the problem that we're dealing with. When your bed is performing a mesh and the build plate is flexing, you're not getting accurate readings. And the same can be said of offset. This leads to all sorts of problems that you wouldn't initially consider when 3D printing. This is exactly why the 3D printing community have been chasing products like the Jupine Gecko for years. Now, before we continue, let's take a second to talk about today's sponsor, PCBWay. If you're a creator or a designer looking to boost your next project, then check out PCBWay. With PCBWay, there's never been a better time to get your project off the ground. These professional grade services include engineering grade 3D printing, as well as custom PCB manufacturing, CNC machining, and sheet metal fabrication. And right now, PCBWay is throwing their 11th year anniversary celebration. This 11 year anniversary celebration is running from now until July 18th. Make sure you check out the site for the exclusive offers for this event, especially if you're looking for more advanced options like industrial grade SLA 3D printing and metal 3D printing like titanium or aluminum. So if you have a project or something you're working on today, make sure to check out PCBWay at PCBWay.com. Overall, the theory behind cold plates is fairly straightforward. The idea is to isolate and remove a variable, theoretically increasing the consistency and reliability of your first layers, while also helping to mitigate possible warping. While these have worked out great during our testing, just keep in mind there are a few misunderstandings in the community about what exactly a cold plate is, how it's supposed to work, and exactly how you're supposed to use it. But once you understand the few caveats and navigate your way around marketing, these are incredibly easy to use. This being that on most modern 3D printers, you can't exactly use a cold plate. Rather, we're forced to use a slightly above ambient plate. Now, this isn't a failure of the plate itself, and it's not really a problem. So let me explain. The most common misconception that you'll see with these plates is that you simply set your bed temperature to zero in your slicer, but this doesn't work. You see, this is a target temperature. So if you set your plate to zero, what will happen is upon start print, your printer will wait for the target temperature, which it can never reach because the plate doesn't magically just get colder. Instead, we need to set our target temperature to just above ambient. Our environment here is set at 27 degrees Celsius. So we need to set our bed slightly above that. The best case scenario is if you have access to your printer's configs, this will allow you to remove the bed heating from the start print macro, allowing you to use the plate at room temperature. What this means is there are virtually no variable changes for the bed itself during the printing process. However, even though we're printing above ambient, we're still getting good results when printing with the Jupine Gecko. During our testing, we're looking for a few things. We're mainly looking for our first layer and adhesion, but we're also keeping an eye on any potential warping that might happen during printing. And we don't really see any issues when it comes to adhesion or our first layers. However, long-term over the lifetime and duration of a print, we're more likely to see issues when it comes to warping rather than simple bed adhesion and first layers. The absolute worst case scenarios for this would be in open frame printers with an air conditioner blowing in a rather small room, a scenario that we have exactly. Now, our mini split is blowing through this entire room, so our open frame 85Ms get hit pretty heavily on the bed. So that's primarily where we're focusing our test. In this test, we're using a fairly decent amount of surface area on the build plate, 
And we see that during the life of the print that we don't really experience any warping or any releasing issues from the plate. And once our print is complete and removed from the printer, you can see that we have no issues with adhesion as we still have to pull the part from the build plate itself. After this, we went ahead and duplicated our part, so we're increasing the overall surface area on the build plate itself. Just like the test before, we're experiencing the same thing upon completion as we're not really having any significant issues. And keep in mind that this is the worst case scenario. We have a mini split blowing in the studio on open frame Flash Forge 85Ms and a print time of six hours. So far we're doing pretty good, but let's go ahead and throw a little bit more at the build plate. Fortunately for our testing, card kits can be notoriously difficult for printing. You see, not only are they increasing their surface area, but there's no connecting layers quite often to make sure that they maintain adhesion during the duration of the print. You name it, failed first layers, poor adhesion, and even warping. If you're going to see something in a print, it's going to be with a card kit. However, when it comes to the Jupine Gecko, we can see that we're not seeing a lot of these issues. And this is simply because we have removed a lot of the variables when it comes to heating a build plate. Once we remove the plate from the printer, we can see that this isn't a case of just barely holding on. This card kit was printed with Elegoo Rapid PLA Plus at a temperature of 220 degrees. And you can see once we remove it from the printer and attempt to remove it from the plate, that it's not exactly easy. Which may be annoying after the fact, but this is exactly what we want during the printing process. The moral of the story is metal contracts and expands with temperature changes. This process often being referred to as bed warping, which creates inaccurate readings and measurements, making features like auto bed leveling far less effective. And this is exactly what plates like this are designed to help with. There are a few different cold plates and different options out there, but for our testing, the Gecko is doing exactly what it claims to do, which is maintain adhesion without heating the build plate. One of my favorite things about the Gecko is it doesn't require any extensive maintenance. You maintain this plate the same way you would maintain any normal textured PEI sheet, which is great since my preferred method of maintaining a build plate is by using isopropyl alcohol. Now, there are other options out there, but so far this one has worked out great in our studio, so I think it's gonna be sticking around for a while. If you've been using any other cold plates or anything like that, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. If you're interested in trying one of these out for yourself, then I'll make sure to have it linked in the description down below. And just remember, anytime you purchase anything from one of our links, it helps out the channel. If you do decide to pick one of these up, just keep in mind that this specific plate is designed to work with your PLA type of filaments, and there are other cold plates and options out there.